I'm Jared Hatfield, and this is Tablet Tips. If you didn't notice, there was a little break. We stopped filming episodes for a while, but I'm back now. I was on co-op, but I'm back for the fall semester, back taking classes, and back publishing episodes of Tablet Tips. In this first episode of the semester, I'm going to talk a little bit about my experiences with the incoming freshmen and their tablets. I've had the opportunity to help out in the Introduction to Engineering class and a few of the Calculus classes, solving some of the technical problems the freshmen have been having with their tablets. Now, this really isn't even using the tablets so much as just getting them working and the growing pains the tablet PC program is having. Now, the first, pro the first problem I want to discuss about is some of the dino problems that have been having. Uh, a few days ago, I posted on my personal blog about this very topic. And just today, I received an email reply from Brian Jones from Dino. And one of the problems I mentioned students were having is it was particularly with the gateways that they were having trouble connecting. Now, Brian replied uh, to my blog post and gave a few useful tips. Now, even though the problem that we were having was really strange, we didn't really find a way to fix it, yet sometimes the problem resolved itself. But you can, if you've had any of these problems, you can go into Dino under resources and send info, and you can send diagnostic info to Dino. This will help them diagnose the problem. Even though we couldn't figure out what the problem was, it somehow fixed itself. And these log files would help Dino figure out what the problem was. Now, another problem students have been having is their accounts weren't being activated. Now, this semester, students' accounts, who, students who are in classes that use Dino should automatically be registered for a Dino account and automatically be registered for that particular class. However, in some cases that wasn't happening and students were having to manually go in, activate their Dino account, and manually add their classes. It's not that big of a deal. However, you have to know how to do it and the students have never done it so they didn't know how to do it so it caused some confusion but this problem should be resolved now there's still a few stragglers out there but the issue has been resolved for the most part now this last problem is complicated to say the least it doesn't involve dino directly it's a microsoft problem the way i have used dino in the past is i've used it with OneNote. this was an older version of dino the newer version of dino from what I've looked at is amazing. The older version of Dino really didn't fit my personal taste of note taking. It was a great application for the teacher to share notes, but it just didn't, it wasn't set up the way I wanted to take my notes. So I did everything in OneNote. Now you can do this through screen clipping or here's the problem that we've been having is printing to OneNote. Now Microsoft for some reason outlined in a Microsoft blog post, as you can see here, did not make the print to OneNote feature available in 64-bit versions of the operating system. As it happens, many of the HP tablets are now shipping with 64-bit versions of the operating system, along with some other ones. You can sometimes choose, depending on the manufacturer, if you want a 64-bit or a 32-bit. And these 64-bit machines are unable to print to OneNote 2007 and will never be able to print to OneNote 2007. Now, there were some students with 32-bit problems printing to OneNote. These are just random problems. The funniest one that I saw was an out of paper error printing to OneNote. It was uh, a little comical to say the least considering you shouldn't run out of digital paper anytime soon. Now, these students weren't able to print to OneNote, but there is an important point to mention here. They don't really need to print to OneNote. They can do everything in Dino. It is simply a personal preference if you want to work in OneNote or work in Dino. However, there's a stipulation here. Some of the classes now are collecting in-class problems in Dino. These have to be completed in Dino. When they're completed in Dino, the teachers have the ability to digitally collect all of the papers from all of the students. Now, this is one of the great features of Dino that dramatically decreases paperwork and just makes the whole system of tablet PCs a whole lot more attractive. However, this is still very new, especially at UofL, and we're going through some growing pains. So, 
that kind of touches on the various things that I've experienced helping the freshmen. To kind of mention another one uh, was connecting to the wireless. I'm not going to go in depth here. I'm going in the show notes. I'll, I'll link to some of the university's resources. But some freshmen were having trouble connecting to the wireless. All these issues were typically resolved. It's just misconfiguration and the way I like to put it is when you stick a hundred students with a hundred computers in one room and you try to get them all on wireless, it's basically a war. And some students' tablets who are conservative in their settings get bumped off the wireless and some students' tablets who are set correctly don't have problems. And even then, even if they're set correctly, sometimes the wireless is crazy. Now, I'm not going to explain all that, but I will have some links in the show notes. So that about wraps it up for this episode of Tablet Tips. In the future, look forward to some viewer submitted questions. I've received plenty of emails of people who might, may or may not be viewers, but they're submitting questions to Stug, and a few of them are going to make great tablet tips. So if you have a question, please email me. The email address is stug at speedstug.com, and our website is speedstug.com. As always, thanks for watching. Thank <laughs> you.